This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Life in the law here on a given Tuesday, this time with John Edmonds. John Edmonds is a litigator, been practicing litigation law since the 60s. Am I right about yes, that, John? that's right. Welcome to the show. You've had some very high-profile cases, including one we're going to talk about today, which involved the Kukui Plaza litigation back in the, what, the 70s? 1977. Yeah, those were the heady days. Weren't 40 they? years ago. You were pretty active in those days, on litigation that, that everybody was reading about every day in the newspaper. <laughs> you still are, I have to add that. Um, so, John... Um, what's interesting about that litigation is there was an issue there that has come up again in the federal in the federal context, uh, involving in the federal context a uh, let's see it was Paul Manafort has been indicted has been indicted by Robert Mueller by Robert Mueller. Special this is an important part of the, the Mueller investigation um, for money laundering for money laundering, and Mueller um, was uh, pardon me. Manafort was Trump's campaign manager. Right, very close to, very close. to Trump. This is all very high-level stuff. Going okay. on right now. Manafort sues Mueller to stop Mueller. Yes, he, Manafort turned around and brought a civil suit against the team prosecuting him, Mueller and his team. Okay. And there, there's an identical parallel to the Fozzie bribery prosecution, because in the middle of the Fozzie bribery prosecution, the key witness, who was, had also been indicted, Hal Hansen, turned around while under indictment and brought a civil suit against the attorney general, the prosecutor, and the governor. Okay, let's look at the parallels. It's very interesting. So where we, the juxtaposition in the federal one happening right now, this is current news currently happening in the courts, is um, the, the person who was indicted is suing um, Mueller, the investigator. No, to, the prosecutor. Mueller's prosecuting. Prosecutor, the prosecutor. Um, to stop him from prosecuting. Yes. This is very unusual very, kind of suit to begin with. Very unusual. And then the question is, there's two questions really. One is, as a matter of law, can he do that? What's going to happen when, when the courts take a look at this? I guess they haven't really ruled on it in that case. Just happened. Yeah, it's happening right now. And the other is, is it a good idea for Manafort to have done that? Because maybe from a practical point of view, even if he hit, had a right to do it, Maybe it would backfire on him. And we can learn a lot from what happened to you in the Kukui Plaza because you represented the governor. The governor. Grant George Cooper. George Ariyoshi. Governor Ariyoshi, uh, Grant Cooper, who was a special prosecutor, just like Mueller is, and the Attorney General Ron Amamiya. Okay, so tell us what unfolded in the 70s in that Kukui Plaza litigation with that indictment. Well, the case was actually in trial. Grant Cooper was prosecuting. Uh, as a special deputy attorney general under Ron Amamiya, Governor Ariyoshi was going to be challenged by Mayor Fozzi for the governorship in the upcoming election. And this is all twisted uh, politics. It's very you know? twisted. <laughs> and uh, Hal Hansen had been given immunity by Grant Cooper as a special. What was, what was his role? He's Hansen the... allegedly paid the bribe to or arranged for the bribe. That was at issue in the case, alleging that uh, Mayor Fozzi had, through intermediaries, arranged for or taken a bribe over the Kukui Plaza development project. So that case is in trial. Um, suddenly, Hansen, who had been given immunity, uh, decided he didn't want to testify. And uh, he turned and filed a civil suit against the governor, the special deputy, and the attorney general. So stop there for a yep. minute. So, so he'd been given immunity, and presumably that was a deal that he would testify. You right. get immunity in respect of willing right. to test, being willing to testify. What happens when a person who is in an immunity deals deal doesn't want to testify? Does the deal go away? Is his immunity go away? The uh, deal falls apart. In that case, it got put in very sharp focus because he came to court during the jury trial, the underlying bribery jury trial and refused to testify, and Judge Toshimi Sodotani put him in jail for contempt, <laughs> which is what happened. Those you're, were the wild west days, well, weren't they, Well, that's John? what happens. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, and uh, you're an immunized witness, you have a deal, you, then you don't honor it. Uh, he was held in contempt for failure to answer questions and put in jail. But he, w he went into uh, jail, into custody, and then he started saying, I'm never going to answer. And Judge Sodotani, uh, warm heart, <laughs> 
warm hearted Judge Sotomayor. He said, you know, if he's not going to ever testify. There's no point in keeping no him point, in jail. I'm going to let him out. And the case was eventually dismissed. But during that time, he, Hansen filed a civil suit against the, his prosecutor. The time he was in jail? Well, during the trial. I can't give you the, but right okay. in there, right, right in, in there. that time. Okay. I wasn't involved in the case until that happened, and then okay. I got a call from the Attorney General okay. saying. That was a fun call. <laughs> what well, was interesting, it was Ron Amamiya, and he said, you know, you've been fighting us on the other side of these. We need often. you to join us Would you come time? over? And I, I didn't like what was going on, so I, I joined <laughs> yeah. and met Grant Cooper. Uh, Cooper was quite a figure himself. He had uh, been the... Uh, a uh, famous prosecutor, and then he became defense counsel for Sirhan Sirhan, who had assassinated Bobby Kennedy. He was from Maine. Cooper was from California. Maine. He, not a local lawyer. No, he was yeah. picked nationally. They were trying to find a neutral. Yeah. And um, when Sirhan Sirhan was indicted, because it was, the world was looking at that case, the L.A. County Bar Association said, we want the best defense lawyer we can put in there, not because we want to get Sirhan off, but the world is looking at our system yeah, of sure. justice. Fair they enough. picked Grant Cooper. Yeah. Well, that was his background. He came out here worked on the case for about a year, got the indictment, rolled up Hansen as an immunized witness, gets into the trial, Hansen won't talk, and all. The, then, then Hansen turns around and files a civil suit. So I get brought in, and the first thing I did was to, ta to issue a civil suit. I took a... This is a civil suit just to stop the prosecution of Frank Fossey, and I suppose that was on behalf... That, that uh, at the time, uh, Hansen was trying to protect himself because, yes. because the deal had fallen apart. He made it fall apart. Um, he made it fall apart. And, and therefore, he was doing it uh, on behalf of both Fosse and himself. He didn't yeah. say that. He, what he did was throw an enormous monkey wrench into an ongoing The, the idea was a monkey wrench, yeah. And he wanted damages. He wanted not to be held in contempt. He wanted to be cleared. And he didn't want to be prosecuted. But what, what, what's the nature I mean, of that claim? I mean, is there a why? I mean, is, is, is it just that he wants it, or is there a reason for it? Well, he, wanted, he did not want to lose his immunity because the deal could fall apart, but he could still be indicted, re-indicted, I suppose, for the criminal conduct that he admitted to that got him the immunity. Sure. So, so what, what was the basis that he alleged in the suit? Uh, unconstitutional misconduct. He, is it, Prosecutorial civil, misconduct. Civil rights violation under a federal statute. Filed in the federal court, 42 U.S.C. 1983. Ah, federal whereas the statute. original trial was taking place state in the state going court. going on in state court. Ah, so it's, it's a change-up. Yeah, and it gets more complicated because the feds also had a charge against Hansen they wanted to bring for another criminal case. But we could <laughs> spend the hour on that. You don't want to do that. So the first thing I did was I issued a notice of taking a deposition. The guy brings a civil suit, you have the right to take his deposition. Yeah. We get into the deposition, Larry Wiseman was defending. I remember Larry Wiseman very, very well. Very high profile lawyer. Yeah, he worked for Roy Cohn, he was also right. from the mainland. Yeah. Yeah. He was here, I know he was here on other matters because I met well, him. He had an office matter. here. Yeah. yeah, and he stayed for a while, uh, he, a year or two. He was not a stupid man. He no, and he was really good at litigation. Very good. He was a really smooth, charming operator. To a point. <laughs> but he was defending, he was representing Hanson, so I issued a notice of taking deposition. They show up, and as I begin the questioning, I called for a, a break, and I said to uh, Wiseman, I said, do you really want him to answer any questions? Because, and I took out a long line of cases, when you bring an action like that and you're under indictment, you want to bring a civil action, you waive your Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination in the criminal case. And, as a and there's no question about that. No. That is the law. That, that is the law. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it may be that even by filing the suit, just the action of filing the lawsuit, you waive your Fifth Amendment yeah. privilege. And this would apply likewise in Washington well, right now. Well, that's what... I haven't read that they've done that yet. Okay, well, maybe they'll watch this I don't, video, John. I don't John think, Edmonds is his name. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think uh, Mr. Mueller uh, needs any advice with the geniuses sure. working for him. Right. I, I'm assuming they've thought of it. But you haven't seen that. The, uh, they're, they're defending on much more technical grounds, and that is that the appointing order yeah. uh, is one that if, if uh, Manafort wants to challenge it, he's got to go into court in the criminal case and bring a motion. Yeah, and yeah. of course, we argued that as well. But here we were, you know, it was all happening very quickly. Take the deposition. I turned to Larry Weiss. So said, your admonition, that if, well, said, if you persist in this, if you, well, if you it actually... Was a question. I said, Larry, I said, take a break here. Let's go out in the hall. You really want to go forward with this? Because as far as I'm concerned, if he answers one question, we have this Fifth Amendment privilege. Right. We go back on the record. Powerful Larry, conversation. Larry's you wife. know, you make a movie out of this shot. <laughs> well, the press did. It was it was pretty uh, pretty high stakes, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of reporters covering it. So, I mean, they were on the hall, et cetera. And um, so we go back in, and Larry Wiseman says, um, 
I think I'd like to take a break in this deposition. I can see him doing and that. And I think a day or two later, the case was dismissed in federal All court. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> of course, that left the state court prosecution of Frank Fozzi in disarray, to put it, it drift, mildly. Yeah, because they didn't have a yeah. witness yeah. Uh, who you know was going to testify. And it finally it, fell apart. It finally did, it did. fall apart. And, and so the, the, the trial never proceeded against Fossey? No, it, it never went to verdict because Judge Sotatani dismissed. And he was mayor the whole time, yeah? Yes, he was. What but case? Governor she ran for re-election and he won. And won. So this... Frank Fossey did not become the governor. <laughs> this was a mar on his career for sure. Good but it was Plaza a... was an embarrassment on his yeah. career for sure. But the, the parallel is very interesting yes. because you've got Manafort doing this. Now, you, you began by saying the second question is, is it a good idea for a criminal defendant under indictment to sue the prosecutor over having been indicted well, while you, it's going on? It's not a good idea. No, but let me go back. You know, So in this case, the suit had been filed, right? Hanson's suit had been filed. So Well, okay. he, he only filed it after the... Yeah, but it had been filed, yes. and uh, your, your advice, your admonition to Larry Weissman was, if you do this, you know, you run the risk of if we keep going. open, open filed, season. Yeah, the right. suit had been filed. Yeah, but but could you make the argument that the very filing of the suit... I made that argument, too. That was uh, less, is that the law, too? Less clear. Much less, less clear. clear. Yeah. Okay. But okay. you start answering questions, and yeah. you can wa he has a right to waive his Fifth Amendment privilege, but I'm certain that Larry Weissman had not thought of that, or at least Hal Hansen hadn't. And it's a crazy thing to do. But you know what? you got to hand it to Larry Weissman, because when you advised him and gave him that admonition, he recognized it. Well, I said he's, he, a, he's he, a very, very astute. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a terrific conversation. Okay. Interesting. So now, now, and that went away. And, um, you know, that was for, you're right, it's complicated and all that. But and it was 40 years ago. Who's counting? Well, I'm just saying it was very hard to even go back and... and put the details back together. The yeah. records aren't there, they're gone. Yeah, it's so interesting the yeah. way all this goes away. And a lot of it depends on recollection. Well, yeah, digging through the yeah. files. Yeah, so okay, so now we have a similar situation. I, I, is it fair to say, John, that in the interim, you know, I haven't heard of any case like this, have you? Where, where somebody who's been indicted or at trial, the defendant, sues the prosecutor to stop prosecuting? I haven't at, at any high political level, governor, mayor, obviously a president. Uh, is this happening in any other state? You would think you would have read about it. I've never seen it. Yeah. So if it happens, you know, it's really questionable as to whether it has good legal basis. But one thing is clear. It's a distraction. It, it's intended to distract oh, sure, everything sure. and derail things. It's a monkey things. wrench. Monkey but wrench, I don't yeah. think this monkey wrench is going to stop much. The, uh, the proper way to challenge an appointing order, of, after all, it's special counsel. If it wasn't special counsel, they hadn't gone out and had to hire a special counsel, just a prosecution that would proceed. And, and Manafort's lawsuit is challenging the appointment of the special counsel as invalid. That's what the, all the press is about lately, that somehow Mueller, who's a man of impeccable credentials, himself a Republican, they're saying he, somehow he's in cahoots with or part of this deep conspiracy uh, that the Did Democrats... He bias. That he's somehow biased. And, disqualified. Uh, dis, therefore disqualified. There are uh, a number of reasons why that probably a frivolous civil suit probably is not going to go anywhere. But I don't, I don't see that anybody's told Manafort he's waiving his Fifth Amendment privilege if he moves forward. Somebody ought to notice his deposition. Somebody ought to send a link to this video. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we do, we do play a role on the national stage. What can I say? <laughs> well, so this is really interesting because uh, it is similar, for sure. It's very parallel. And uh, it's, it's questionable to begin with, um, but it's, you know, it's obviously got its strategical benefits. Uh, to a point, though, you can, it may be strategic to have done it, but as has happened with Hal Hansen, you take that one step, just take a step, answer a couple of questions, and you may have waived. Yeah. Now, what about Rule 16? You said it was frivolous. This kind of suit could be treated as frivolous. Uh, does Rule 16 have any teeth in a case like this? You're talking about Rule 11 for the bringing of Rule 11, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it's, that Rule 11 deals with frivolous lawsuits, and it's a, it's a disciplinary rule, and it, uh, it allows penalties against lawyers who bring, bring frivolous, frivolous lawsuits. Actions. Rule 11 is a, it's a threat lawyers make to each other when they believe that the guy who filed the suit shouldn't have filed the suit. My opinion about what's going on in Washington, D.C. from this distance is that it is unique enough. It's a unique enough argument that it may not be a Rule 11 violation. But that's going to have to be decided by a federal judge somewhere someday if, it, if they persist. I think that it, the 
uh, lawsuit's going to get dismissed, whether there would then be a, a follow-on Rule 11 suit against the lawyer who brought Manafort's action, who knows. Yeah. But it's a delaying maneuver. It's, it's in part done what I think they intended to do. It's gotten a lot of publicity. Suddenly people are focused on, is uh, Mueller somehow doing this for the wrong as, reasons? As to whether it's, there might be yeah. value, a, a basis in that suit, and so it raises this question of, Maybe Mueller is disqualified. Well, it's typical Trump. is always a distraction. Always you a distraction. come at him for one thing, and he, well, let's go over here for a while yeah. and divert you. Yeah, don't, don't think about this. Think yeah. about this. I mean, it's, it's a story. In fact, we have commentaries about that very yeah. issue. If you track on it, you find that he's always distracting everybody. And I, after this break, John, I'd like to talk about, you know, how this kind of investigation proceeds and what, you know, I know we don't know. It's all behind the, the curtain, but... Uh, I'd like to speculate with you about what the strategies are, the considerations uh, that we'll, we'll see later. The same kind, perhaps, of distractions. <laughs> right after this break, that's John Edmonds, a litigator, a litigator for many years, uh, an excellent litigator in high-profile cases. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. My friend, mother. What big eyes you have, she said. All the better to see you with, my dear. That's the wolf. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah uh, this is the starting line. Push. Uh, uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. We're back, and like MacArthur, we told you we'd come back, and we came back. That's John Edmonds. He's a high-profile litigator, been practicing in Hawaii since the 70s, maybe the 60s. 60s, 60s sorry. Uh, I want to make you younger than you really are. And I don't want to incriminate myself, but it was the 60s. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this uh, the suit. You mentioned in the break that you read Manafort's suit against Mueller. Um, and, I mean, well, I try to prepare for these programs. Of course, it's fair enough, it, fair yeah. enough that you would. Thank you for that. Uh, what was it like to read this? I mean, what, what, did the, what did this complaint look like? It's about 50, 60 pages long. It traces the whole history of the special counsel and cites opinions saying it can be a dangerous tool in the wrong hands, et cetera. But it's challenging the underlying basis for what, whether a special counsel was necessary. Why couldn't it have just stayed with the AG? And we all know why it couldn't have just stayed with the AG, because that AG's office is probably de facto controlled by the president. So they didn't want it there. They wanted an independent uh, counsel, which Acting Attorney General Rosenstein said was necessary. He framed a very detailed appointing order. And that appointing order pretty clearly gives Mueller the power to do what he's doing. But yeah. Manafort challenged it in, in great detail. So all of those, Rosenstein and uh, the idea that you needed a special prosecutor at all? You know, let, let's back up. Jeff Sessions was and still is the Attorney General. Yeah. When the issue became the investigation of Manafort and the investigation of people around President Trump and potentially President Trump, yeah. the rules back there required that Sessions recuse himself from that case, which yeah. he did, and he appointed yeah. Rosenstein as the acting Attorney General. Yeah. Rosenstein, in turn, appointed special counsel, and we have the special counsel statute to permit that. It was done with Nixon. It was done with uh, Clinton. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that the special counsel, counsel statute sets out parameters for when indeed. you can do it. Yep. And so, I mean, is there really any issue, John? Well, Manafort's challenging it up, down, and sideways. Yeah. 40 pages worth yeah, of great. challenge. Yeah, 40 page and, complaint. Which yeah. the, the experts back there think it's frivolous. Uh, frivolous or not, the proper form for bringing it is in the criminal case. You go in, you think the prosecutor is disqualified, you bring that before the judge in that case. That, but that, that does happen. does happen. They haven't done that. 
Yeah, they want to make as much of a fuss as they possibly can. Because you're you're leaving that up to the judge that's going to try the underlying case. Yeah, this yeah. gets you a lot of distraction. Yeah, just one thing you said I'd like to dwell on for just a minute. So I remember Sessions um, Sessions lied in his confirmation hearing in front of the Senate, and when that came out, that's when he felt he needed to recuse himself. He lied about his involvement with the Russian issues, as I recall. And, and, he, and he felt, when, when, when it came out, he felt that he needed to soften it, uh, or there might be worse sanctions against him for the lie. So he recused himself. I'm okay. not sure that's why he would say he recused himself. That's certainly the, the spin the press has put on it. I think he had, had a less incriminatory version of why he needed to okay, recuse himself. Okay, but the notion is that he didn't tell the truth in his confirmation hearing. Right. I think that's settled. Yes. Uh, and then he recuses himself in order to take, you know, and soften that somehow and get beyond that. Yes. Uh, maybe in the way of a distraction even. Okay. And, I and mean, that's why the president got so upset with him, of course, because that's now why he didn't want special sessions. No, he to wanted recuse sessions himself. right in there. He wanted sessions to tough it out on what happened on the revelations uh, of his testimony in front of that Senate confirmation committee. Yeah, the president's very angry with sessions. Or taking himself out of the loop, yeah. as Sessions should have. That's something well, that he gets credit for, for whatever reason. The issue we have never dealt with is whether um, a person who is confirmed on the basis of a lie should remain in office. Because there was no sanction Absolutely. taken against him, no perjury, nothing like that, uh, for his lying to Congress. Mm -hmm. Not yet, but the Senate, of course, has would have the power to bring him back, reopen the confirmation. Senate's not investigating that. No, though. of course not. <laughs> The Senate. It's, it's not look, the same Senate we grew up with, Jay, I tell you now. In, any time you're in, a, in an issue like that, you first look around the room and see who's got the votes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is politicized yeah. Who's got the votes on that? It's yeah. Republican Senate. So this is, this is actually pretty political anyway, because they're, they're trying to undo the decision Rosenstein made. Um, and Rosenstein himself, you know, he could be fired tomorrow. Oh, yeah, he? yeah. He could be fired by Sessions or, or indirectly through Sessions, um, and then somebody could be appointed in his stead and revoke that that convening order, that appointment order. That appointed order. Mueller, uh, and, they, and they they could start it over, or who knows what the next acting attorney general would do. I could say we looked at Manafort's suit. You know, he's got a good point, so we're going to undo this whole special counsel thing, and we're going to we're going to let this go within the Department of Justice. Uh, and it, it, short of Rosenstein, we won't have him there at all. <laughs> or they could just cut off the funding. That's that's what the the Senate, funding to the special counsel. Yeah. No, there's that yeah. risk. But yeah. right now, that's not happening. There's a lot of pressure to but it could, it not happen. Certainly could. And I really, I really wonder whether when when the needle gets closer to the White House, whether those kinds of things will be the kind of desperation moves that seem seem appealing to him. Yeah. I agree. It's a great risk, uh, and um, it, it is going to get riskier for the president. Yeah. Well, let's, let's look at special counsels in general. I mean, so here we have a special counsel. There are criminal proceedings happening. Uh, he's getting close. Uh, it was something in the paper that his, his next big interview was going to be Trump himself. Yes. And when, when you go that far down the pike, um, you know, you're close to the end. You're, you've done a lot of work. You're close to the end. You're close to, you know, the, I guess the, the, the conclusions of your investigation and the recommendations of your investigation. Well, that sounds pretty good if you say it fast enough, Jay, but with all due respect for your <laughs> insight, you don't know because you don't know what's going to come out of an attempt to interview the president, what the president's going to say, and where that may lead you. So maybe to more investigation. Maybe to much more investigation. And what I don't see happening is the kind of questioning of the president that needs to be done. You, you see in the press right now that he, uh, the president's team is negotiating for, we'd like to just uh, get written questions and submit answers in writing. We don't think a face-to-face face is, boys, don't, don't do ever it. do it. <laughs> Somebody once said, uh, centuries ago, that cross-examination is the greatest engine ever invented for the discovery of truth by mankind that's ever been known. You can torture people, 
and, and make them say anything. But cross-examination actually truly does get you to the truth. Great part you, of English law. Yeah, great part. You don't get there with written questions and written <laughs> answers, which of course, the person being questioned, the president would have an opportunity to run by his lawyer. You'd love to be there, wouldn't you? I would love to be there. I'd love to be doing the questioning, but nobody's, nobody's asked watched. me. Nobody's asked me to. No, Mueller and his team are as fine a collection of lawyers as you could hope for in a matter like this. Don't and you worry that they're Democrats, or at least some of them are? No, Mueller's a Mueller rock a Republican. Republican. Uh, Got a lot of Republicans Democrats around. on that team or anti-Trumpers. Yeah. Jay, at that level in the Justice Department, despite what you're hearing, uh, <laughs> they are as neutral uh, as, as you could ever expect. So and how does it go? Neutral. How does it go? You know, Mr. President, would you sit down over there and we're going to have a court reporter swear you in, and we're going to videotape this just in case. And we're going to spend the next, um, you know, two weeks asking you questions. And we're going to keep on repeating those questions until you Tell bloody you. answer them. Yeah. Is that how it's going to go? No, that's not how, <laughs> that is not going to happen. It, it'll be something short of that. Or the alternative, of course, is that, and this is settled law, Mueller has the power to subpoena the president before a grand jury. You can put him in front of a grand jury. And if you go in front of a grand jury, president or not, you don't have the right to have your lawyer in the room. But you could be the defendant in the, in the in the indictment, no? Oh yeah, but you can be a witness and you can be a person of interest. But when you're speeded before a grand jury, both state, federal, you do not have the right to have a lawyer in the room with you. He can be outside, and and there are some tremendous high-profile illustrations of this, where a high-profile defendant is called in, and after each question, he has a right to send out a question to his lawyer. <laughs> and it's interrupted and the question goes out and the lawyer helps. But uh, you don't need too many of those before the grand jury catches on and what happens, you see an indictment coming yeah, down. Yeah, they don't believe you in anything. Yeah. Yeah. But what happens uh, here is uh, the law about the ability of Mueller to do that is settled. There's no dispute. It happened. Including with, the president. It, uh, as to the president, Mueller has that power. And that was settled in the Nixon case. It was settled in the Clinton case. He has the power. So it does mean something that oh, yeah. he's, he's gone this far, that he, he can formulate questions to the president, oh, yeah. and he's got enough, enough material already that those <clears throat> questions will be good, good questions and close enough. We don't know, but he can learn a lot from that interview, because he can, he, you see, what's the, the difficult part of the president's position, the president doesn't know what he's got, what Mueller's got. Right. He doesn't, I mean, he may know, he may not, but he doesn't know how many different people Mueller's talked with. And... So he goes in, Mueller is questioning him from a script. The president doesn't know what's in the script, which is why he ought to tell the truth, which is why he probably isn't going to go sit for that. But, you know, he doesn't usually tell the truth. We, we've seen that. I, mean, oh, I don't I've, think there's any question I mean, about that. Clearly. What happens to a witness? I mean, he's a witness like anyone else, under oath, okay, who's going to be tested in every statement, who con conventionally, you know, customarily, typically, does not tell the truth. What happens to him? Well, if you lie to the grand jury, it's perjury. A false, Is he exempt from it? No, no, no. And a false statement to a federal official, even if you're not in front of a grand jury, is another violation of law. Federal officer is questioning you in official investigation. False statement is itself a felony. Can he, can he uh, exonerate himself? Can he pardon himself? Can he do that? Big question. Probably not. Probably, Probably not. It's not logical anyway. Well, you know? The other question you haven't asked me is, could he take the Fifth Amendment? Okay, good. Now, yeah. the one thing he can never do is take the Fifth Amendment. Why not? Practically. Because I refuse to answer on the ground I may tend to incriminate myself. You're not going to win the next election when you do that. Nixon never did that. Clinton never did it. No president, as a practical matter, can do it. John, he has a right to do it. But you know, you could walk out of this studio and your phone could be ringing. It could be the White House. And they would say, perhaps, <laughs> Mr. Edmonds, you know, the president has seen this video. He's understood about the difficulties facing him right now. And he would like to engage you, Mr. Edwards. Edmonds. Would you, would you take that case, John? I would tell him everything I know about how much I don't like him and the case and don't want to do it. And if there was no one else to do it, I would consider doing because I think that's a duty that lawyers, competent lawyers, under circumstances like this have. But that would be my response. Now, the other thing is, he would be an impossible client to represent. These lawyers he's got run the gamut. Some of them are, are very good, some of them aren't. But I am convinced he, he, they are not 
he, he's not following the advice they're giving him because if they were, he wouldn't be talking. They would have told him, no get comment, off no comment <laughs> just get off, but they can't control him. So yeah. uh, assume arguendo, I took the case, I got into it, and he kept up, I'd give him the same advice, and he kept on to Twitter, I'd probably withdraw, probably sure. feel compelled to withdraw. Sure, because you can't help him that way. You can't. You and can't. that would be the case he can't help for himself. any client. He can't help himself. Yeah. John, so wonderful to have you here to okay. be able to explore these things. So appreciate your candor and your incisive thought. Well, I, I, it's you. been a great discussion. Thank you. It's going to be an interesting... Uh, yeah, now we can see what happens. Yeah. Interesting unfolding of the curtains. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jay. Thank you, John Edmonds. Aloha.